Lee Thompson Scar Orchestra with Bite the Bullet, and I'm delighted to say Lee Thompson joins us on the show. How's it going? All very well, Chris. How's yourself? Yeah, very good. Uh, we, we're liking that. So, what can you tell us about the new album? What do you want to know? <laughs> it's a uh, Scar album of 12, 13 beautiful tracks uh, recorded in the uh, uh, luxurious area of uh, Neeson um, and mixed down in. Uh, where was it in the, the Ironworks down in Brighton, <coughs> and then moved the Pat Colliers for remixing uh, as it was delayed due to not everyone being on the, the same page. But it's yeah, it's basically uh, probably half an hour, fifty percent covers, and this time fifty percent uh, originals uh, penned by most of the band, you know, each member of the band, or most of them anyway, nine of them, and uh, most enjoyable experience. Um, How happy are you with the follow-up? Because your first album was The Belevenance of Sister Mary. Uh, yeah, Ignatius. Um, yeah, I find that hard over, to say. That's why I left it out. <laughs> oh, over, over, i tell you what. What was the album called um, after... The Madness album called after uh, The Liberty in All Holgate? Do you know? Uh, is it the Oi Oi CC Jar Jar Dada? <laughs> I like it. It's easy for you to say. <laughs> I can yeah, say that one. Do you, know, do you know what it means? No, I don't, actually. They, they all mean yes in different languages. Oh, right, so that's how you decided the name for that album. Wee oui, wee, oui, see, see, yeah, yeah, da, da. Anyway, yeah, getting back to the uh, Bite the Bullet album, um, how does it differ? Well, for starters, we got, um, we had a different drummer, which makes all the difference, who is called Mez Clough who's currently um, jumped ship, is now with um, Van Morrison, which is a bit of a shame, um, because, you know, the rent doesn't pay itself. So um, I'm really pleased that I got him to play drums on this album. And uh, he was with us for a couple of years, and I mean, he's, uh, you know, the door's open for him, but uh, you got to move on. Yeah, so uh, over the moon with the outcome, you know, in a word, over the moon with this album. So, what was the process like? I mean, did did you go back in time, you looked at some of the great Scar songs you liked, and then thought, yeah, let's do it with the orchestra? Yeah, pretty much so. You know, it was the same sort of procedure as the uh, previous album, uh, Benevolence, um, but with original songs. You know, I, I asked them all to get a song together each, and uh, to my surprise, they did just that. And uh, our guitarist... Uh, Andy Neil, he wrote too, uh, the single being Feel a Little Better, and uh, the track I Am King. And they're, I, I, I'm just beside myself with them. Fantastic. Really chuffed that they got that together. And it was a joyous experience. And, you know, in sort of the same way as uh, the benevolence, you know, no pressure, no one cracking the whip, just going down there um, and doing it in our own time. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's madness. It's madness that really sort of helped me finance it. So it's a sort of uh, double-edged sword. You know, uh, sort of madness always comes first if, uh, you know, if, if it comes to it. And, uh, you know, recently I've sort of <laughs> created a bit of a monster here. I've been offered some dates in March, April next year um, with the Scar Orchestra, but of course... Well, not of course, but uh, it just so happens that um, Madness uh, have been offered something in J Japan and uh, around that side of the planet. So you can't be uh, in two places so at once, can you? <laughs> beam me up, Scotty. No, <laughs> not really. Uh, so, yeah, so it's, it's uh, yeah, a bit of a dilemma. So, uh, uh, just march on, don't you? Just got to march on. See, um, see what happens, you know, maybe... Uh, might be taking passengers on the space shuttle. You know. <laughs> I noticed oh. that um, on your previous album, Belevolence, you did a cover of uh, the Mission Impossible theme, and on the new album, Bite the Bullet, you've done you've done a Scar version of On Her Majesty's Secret Service. Is, th is this going to be a theme on uh, future albums? <laughs> Who knows? Who knows, Christopher? Um, I fa I'll tell you what I quite fancy is the Perry Mason theme. You know? Know no, theme? no, Should I don't just, actually. Fantastic. Maybe you just sing it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't want you, I don't want your listeners turning off. Yeah, I reckon that's going to. If we ever get to do a third album, that'll be that's the contender, you know, hot off the press. But uh, that was suggested by Kev Bedet, a guitarist, who um, 
you know, instead of writing an original, he suggested that. And we was like, yeah, let's have a go at it. And it, and it worked. Um, it sounds quite, um, yeah, I'm pleased with it. Yeah, yeah, I like it too. So, so how's it been this year with your gigs? And <laughs> so how's it been this year with your gigs and everything? I know that you was under the bridge at the start of the year. Was it? not under the bridge, sorry, yeah. the jazz cafe, weren't you? I believe. Yeah, yeah. Now we've done the un under the bridge the year before that. I think that was. That's a funny old place built under Chelsea Football Ground, apparently, run by your Ruskies. Yeah, we had to do the show and uh, and so got turfed out pretty quick to get the um, the. Uh, Everywhere is Essex mob down there, um, so yeah, that was uh, quite an experience. Sort of on on stage playing, you go into the room to de sweat and then pff, turf down onto the street. Bloody outrageous! I'll never play in that bloody town again. I tell you, for sure. But the uh, jazz cafe gig, yeah, fantastic. The last one we done, moving swiftly forward, forward was the uh, Hundred Club, uh, where we done the album launch. And, Great. Uh, it was suggested by a guitarist, clever old soul, God bless him, Andy Neil, that uh, what we do is we, um, with the uh, album Half the Press, we uh, do an emboss of uh, Lee Thompson Sky Orchestra 100, 100 Club, sign up, everyone signs the albums, and um, they're sort of, they're in with the price of the entry, so as to pay the rent. I thought it was a very good idea. So everyone came along the gig, all right, it was 20 quid again. But you've got a signed embossed, you know, probably half of them are on eBay now. But uh, and, and you get to see um, the band live to boot. And it was a thoroughly enjoyable, I'd say probably the best, well, not the best, but one of the best in my all-time top five um, favourite Star Wars, the gigs. It was a nice and relaxed, great audience, great sound, uh, just a good atmosphere, you know, when all the stars line up, it just clicked, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice intimate gig, isn't it? I saw Simmer up there a few years ago, and uh, yeah, I think you get a great vibe in that place. Simmer up? What? S Simmer or Simmer Rip? How many of them left? Roy Ellis. Mr. Simmer Rip. <laughs> that's, that's what he's known as. <laughs> Department S. <laughs> yeah. And all good? Oh, yeah, it was a fantastic gig, yeah. Really enjoyed yeah, it. Oh, cool. And yeah, I think that was one of the. Was it Treasure Isle? Wasn't it Treasure, Treasure Isle? Um, skinhead Moon, I'm pretty sure, but it was a yeah single. I um, yeah, it was one of the first records records that I uh, had on my Van der Molen record deck back in seventy sixty nine seventy. Yeah, he definitely did that one about. <laughs> he done that a couple of times. He well, can't it, blame it, him. Such a great tune. Skinhead anthem. Yeah, that was good on BBC Four the other day. Well, it was okay. Don Letts is. Uh, 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 um, Skinner documentary. I don't know if you got to see that. No, I didn't. But I wanted to ask you about it. So, what was your what was your yeah. feelings? You thought it was good, but it could have been better. Yeah, yeah no, I, I, I'm glad they got that across. That it was totally, you know, separate from, um, you know, National Front and all that jargon. Um, yeah, the, the, it just that getting, you know, linked into it, the skinhead and National Front thing. Um, they were two completely separate things. Um, but yeah, they were sort of dragged together by really, yeah basically by the media yeah um which is so it's good they've the cleared way. it up isn't it really i mean yeah no i thought that come across i thought there was you know two or three fellas on there that really put you know put that across and put it across very well um uh who else was on it gavin martin who used to work with crunch uh chrissy boy and myself had this band uh many years ago called Crunch and he was our driver Gavin who's on the show and he's, he's still exactly the same proper um, very uh, lively yeah try and try and get to see it on catch up yeah it's, uh, it's quite interesting I mean you know Don Letts uh, I think could have um, been a bit more uh, in depth with things but um, you know how far do you go I mean for, for what it was it came it, yeah it came across pretty well yeah and I think Pauline Black and Kevin Rowland were the two um Celebs, the only two celebs on there. I was expecting <coughs> to see pubs, pubs, pub sock up, <laughs> pardon, uh, sucks pop up. It's, uh, yeah, it weren't to be. I think he uh, avoided doing that for whatever reason. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, he, he definitely would have added something to it, wouldn't he? But uh, yeah, yeah, I'll, I I'll check so. that out. Definitely. So, so yourself yeah. um, with Madness, you mentioned well, a future t tour of Japan. It sounds like was it Japan or China? <laughs> uh, no, Japan. Well, whilst you're down there, um, I think uh, 
Japan and probably uh, the, the, the man, you know, management that think that our agent's going to try and, you know, save just going going out there just to do Japan, probably uh, throw in uh, Aussie. Oh, you go uh, down a storm there, wouldn't you? Even. Oh, yeah, yeah, especially Perth is full of the yeah, expats over there. Um, Melbourne's very, yeah, uh, I'd look forward to playing there if we go. Um, uh, New Zealand and then uh, probably Los Angeles, New York, and thereabouts, but uh, not, not too long, so I, uh, I'm a great tips. I, th I think you're also, are you in Brighton with yeah, Madness in... Catch up. <laughs> are you in, uh, with Madness in November in uh, Brighton, I believe it is? A year in, um, what is it, December, the the first Saturday in December with John. Yeah, Bournemouth, Cardiff, Brighton, and so on and so on, and then the rest of it. And uh, the Saturday show at Brighton is a, um, a matinee show, which uh, is probably be the best show of the whole tour. I thoroughly enjoy the um, daytime ones with, it, with the kids, the kids. <laughs> yeah, getting getting down with the kids, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, I mean, it's been great having you on the show, and I'll be uh, heading off to the Brighton gig because it's nearest us, so, yeah, that'll be really mm. good. Looking forward to it. And uh, enjoying your new album, and we're going to hear... What one did we decide on? I think it was... Um, well, I reckon, um, yeah, feel a little better. And if you get a chance to play a third one, try, yeah, try With The Man, which was written by Louis, and it's uh, quite different from the rest of the album. And, uh, yeah, Bite of a Bullet is available absolutely nowhere at the moment, I think. No, it's still up on Amazon. Yeah. Get out there and buy a copy. Great. Probably, well, thanks a lot. For... The pay. Cheers, Th Chris. Cheers. Thanks a lot for joining us on the show.